Welcome guys to another video from me and Max. Um, today's video is a little bit different. It's a question and answer. Last week and this morning I posted on Instagram saying, ask me any questions, we're shooting a YouTube video and we will answer as many as um, we possibly can. So hopefully your questions made it into the video today. Max is gonna be asking the questions. Yep. I'm gonna be answering them, but Max, feel free to butt in at any time. Yeah, I might, I might have a little bit of a twist in mind. You never know. What's that? Got? What, what do you mean? We'll find out. We'll find out. But should we kick it off anyways? Yes, let's go. Cool. So the first question that we've got um, from obviously Steve's Instagram, we've got, how did you find it starting out on camera? I absolutely hate it. <laughs> and I'm still struggling with it right now, um, to be completely honest. But the more I do it, the um, more videos we shoot, um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable. The one thing that I don't like is photos. Um, every time Duna's like, Steve, I need a thumbnail yeah. or we need a picture, I'm like, oh shit, here we go again. I think you're definitely, definitely getting better as yeah. well, so you just get more comfortable on it, aren't you? Well, the more practice, yeah. um, the, the more it comes across. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird concept at the, at the beginning, isn't it? Yeah, trying to, to keep focus and understand that the camera's right there. Yeah. And then having a conversation and you're like, <laughs> which, which way do I go? Um, yeah, but I, I am getting a, a yeah. bit more comfortable with it now, so yeah, hopefully no, the next. Next six months, it'll become a little bit more Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So the next question that we've got then, guys, is uh, more property related now. So what areas of property do you teach in the masterclass programs? Um, deal sourcing. Yep. And the reason we teach deal sourcing is because we know a lot about it. It's something that we do a lot of, as, as you know, yep. and you're well aware of. Um, and obviously, we've just employed Tom Day as our head real estate acquisitions yep. manager. Unbelievable deal sourcer. Unbelievable deal sourcing. Deal yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so we teach that. Um, buy, refurbish, refinance, rent. Our whole portfolio is built around that. So the experience that we've had over the, the time that we've been doing property, um, I believe I have more than enough knowledge that, that I can put out to people, that's why I teach it. Um, and then we just have a property masterclass, which is literally everything. It's like from your credit score to tiered yeah. lenders to renovation costs to all sorts, there's a, there's a, a really, lot of stuff in there. Yeah, it's a really great introduction for beginners really, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than sort of going straight into a specific strategy, it kind of gives an overview of everything. Yeah, really. overview of what it takes to be in property, but also you say it's a really good, um, well it is great for beginners, but you'll be shocked at how many people who come on the, yeah, yeah. On, well you've seen it, who come on the program, who have got multiple properties, but, there's things that they didn't know. Of course, yeah. Um, even down to credit reports, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the craziest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Um, but yeah, I, I believe in teaching what you're good at. I know a lot about rent to rent, um, but I don't teach it because I've never done it. Yeah. So I can't be out here trying to, to teach people how, how to do rent to rent when I've never done it myself. Yeah. So I, I teach what I know and things that have worked for me. Um, it's my opinion. I believe that I am very knowledgeable in, in property, in so that, field, that's yeah. what I teach, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those 100%. So, uh, next question then is, what would you do with 50K? Sorry oh, to go interrupt on. you. Yeah, go on. We do have the house flipping blueprint, which is ah, a bit yeah, of a tongue yeah, twister, yeah. Um, being released next week, so keep your eyes open for that. Yep. That's Can't pretty that. cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really it's only 25 it. spaces available as well, um, so that's gonna be really cool. Yeah. So yeah, next question was, uh, what would you do with 50K? So if you have 50K right now, what would you do with it? Um, well, I wouldn't buy a buy-to-let, as in buy the property and rent it out. Um, 50K tied up in one property does not make any sense whatsoever um, in my world. That's my opinion. Um, I suggest to people that who want a buy-to-let portfolio to live on the passive income, that you would need a minimum of five, just to even like, be halfway there. Um, That's to replace the sort of like national average wage Yeah, really, so isn't like it? On, on five properties, buy to let national average, you're probably looking at about, after you've paid your, your interest only buy to let mortgage, you're probably looking at around 1,500 to 2,000 pound, depending yeah. on Obviously where on you're at. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, so with 50K, I wouldn't advise anybody to buy a buy to let. Um, I would say to them, maybe do the BRRR method. Um, so hopefully you could pull all your money back out of a deal and you still own a property, or go into flipping. Yeah. Um, flipping is amazing, isn't it? Like If you can do three properties a year, you can yeah. easily turn that 50K into anything from 80K north of that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I would definitely advise people to do flipping or maybe the BRRR method. Trying to build up that cash pot a little yeah, bit Yeah, of course, more, yeah. 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 Cool. Or the portfolio. 
Yeah, yeah, If you can yeah. pull your money back out. So the buy refurbishment yeah. finance. Yep, yeah, definitely. So, um, this is a good one actually, I like, I like this one. Would you change your approach from when you started out in property to where you are now? I was going to answer this question when it got sent to me, mm. um, because I know the person who asked this question, um, he's a part of the, the circle. Yeah. And when I, when I read that question, I was like, oh wow, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Curran, great question. Um, yes, massively would change my approach from when I first started um, eight years ago. I believed that owning as many properties was the key. So at first, I did completely what I preach now, uh, opposite to what I preach now. I used to buy houses and rent them out and then wait till I had enough money to buy another one. Um, knowing what I know now and the knowledge that I have and the network of people I have around me, that, that wouldn't happen. I would definitely go into flipping and building the cash pot and you know having more money in the bank um, and deal sourcing. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about deal sourcing properly till about four years ago, maybe five years ago. And obviously, like back then, it wasn't called deal sourcing. It was just passing a house that you was turning down Obviously, onto a friend or yeah, someone yeah, yeah. who knew somebody. Um, but yeah, I would definitely change my approach from what I knew back then to now. That's the great thing about obviously like learning as you go though, like you wish that you'd obviously had that information yeah. come to you earlier on in life, but you've got it now, so you're able to then pass it on to other people. Well, that's why I believe education is the most important thing. Absolutely. It's like we, we go to school at however old we are and we, and we leave school however old we are because education is key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need knowledge and, and you need to know certain things. So that's why we've set up the property circle because the education we have will change someone's course to probably how they're thinking today. Yeah, yeah. well knowledge really is power, so yeah. absolutely, I agree. Cool, so next question is uh, advice for a new property deal sourcer. So somebody who's just starting out now, Yep. have you, have you got any advice for them? Education, again, um, definitely, definitely do education, um, be around people who are doing deal sourcing and, and be around people who have actually deal sourced, that's key. Um, growing your network, you need to have a network of people. Um, if you watch the video that we just put out on deal sourcing, you'll understand how important it is, not just finding the deal, having someone to sell the deal to. Yeah. And you can't have that without having a network of people around you. So first steps for me is definitely education. That, that's the way I would go. Um, and then it just grows from there. Once you're around people, doors open. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And we've noticed that even with people coming into the property circle now, yeah. people that have come and they've been complete novices all the way through to people that have got uh, a property portfolio already. Yep. And the growth has just been exponential from, from where they've gone. Well, last from. night, was key. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Guys, last night I got a text message from a deal sourcer. This is, this is crazy. Um, so, yeah. And he sent me a deal at 7.32 p.m. last night. And he was like, Steve, I viewed this property. Um, I've secured it at a figure. Um, are you interested? I was like, send me the address. Send me the, um, the videos and stuff that you've taken of the house. He sent everything over to me within three minutes. I was like, give me half an hour. I was actually having a conversation with Matthew Cox, who we sourced the, the nine circle. bedroom yeah, for yeah. at that time. He actually had messaged me saying, Steve, watch your deal sourcing video. I've kind of got the bug again. And he went on to write me and sent me a house. And he's like, what's your thoughts on this one? And to be fair, it's a good house. We'll go through that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really good. And then I just messaged him saying, are you looking for another house? And he was like, yeah, always stay, you know, you know what I'm like. Um, and I said, I've just been sent one, sent it to him, sent in the comparable, and he says, what's your thoughts? And I was like, I wouldn't send it you if I didn't think yeah, it was yeah, a great deal. Not. And at five to nine, um, the estate agents were still open till 9 p.m. Um, Which is phenomenal, that in itself is Well, brilliant. I'm actually gonna say who the estate agents are. It was fast move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so really impressed with them. Yeah, um, really good service. I don't wanna say the agent's name, so I don't know whether he wants us to, to put his yeah. name on there, but even the agent was fantastic. Um, Matt sent his ID over, sent his proof of funds over, sent his solicitors over, um, and then literally the house was taken off the market. 14 viewings have been cancelled today. Sold signs going up at three o'clock today. Um, and the deal sourcer has been paid a fee. Yep. Um, he's over the moon, Matt's over the moon. Um, I'm over the moon because Matt's part of the property yeah, circle. Of and it's his second house. And it's he, literally the definition of like a win-win-win situation. Oh, it was, you, it was you amazing. And if Matt didn't want that house, there was I had 30, 40 other people other that people was waiting now. for a deal. It yeah. just so happened that Matt was texting me at that exact moment I got the deal. Um, so yeah, so, so for it's deals. Crazy. Sourcing, all in like just over an hour? All in just, well, an hour and 28 minutes. Something like that, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was all done yeah. and dusted. Amazing, so, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. 
So yeah, um, on to the next question then. We've got, how do you decide to flip or to hold? If you want to like elaborate on that question. Yeah, well for anybody that so when, I, when we buy a house, I hate selling houses, um, but I understand cash flow is king. Um, so I, I, I really don't like buying, um, selling houses. But when I do actually buy a house and I break down the renovation costs and stuff, I only buy houses that I can add value to. In today's market, that's really difficult for people who haven't got the knowledge or the yeah. connections that I've got and the network and stuff. Um, so when I do buy a house, I am automatically buying a house that I know I'm adding value to. So when it comes to the end value, I know that I can refinance it and basically pull most of my money out of every single deal that I personally buy. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying that all of you guys at home are going to be able to replicate this all the time um, because I have a lot of knowledge in the industry and for people who are starting out, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people out there like deal sources that are, are telling lies and end values aren't correct. They're being within a quarter of a mile, half a mile radius of the actual street. And we all know one street to another street can differ. Can be completely different. Well, Max, obviously, yeah, yeah. you see it all the time because you, time, you yeah. go through a lot of the deals that we get mm -hmm. sent as well. Um, so. Yeah, I, I kind of know what the end value is going to be, so I know that 99.9% .9 of the time I'm going to refinance it, yeah. and that's how I decide. It's kind of like just listen to the numbers because the numbers the numbers don't but lie. I live either. my life by numbers. Exactly, yeah, I exactly. Hold everything in life is numbers. So. Yeah, too right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so next question, I think we're on question number seven now. Where do you get your kitchen slash bathrooms from, and is it the same place every time? Wow. Mm. That's actually a really good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kitchens and bathrooms, we leave to the builders. Um, we tell them what we want. Um, we explain what kind of quality um, bathroom or kitchen we want, depending yep. on what we're trying to do. Yep. Um, and then we leave we leave it to the to the builders. Yeah, we have um, quite a lot of trust, obviously, with the builders because they understand exactly what it is yeah. what, that we want. So it's um, obviously as time goes on, the more projects that you work with your builders, they will understand exactly what it is that you're looking yeah. for, uh, different things like that. So it's pretty straightforward for us to just say to a builder, right, okay, we're looking to do this to the property. Um, can you go out and pick the kitchen, the bathroom, yeah. even the doors and the interior and stuff like that? When you're doing your first renovation or even your second or even your third, um, make sure you are on top of the builders though yeah. because they will try and cut corners if you don't have a relationship with them. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a bit of advice. Until you get really comfortable and you're on 5, 10, 15 renovations with the same builder, they will try and cut corners. Some, not all builders, but some will try and save money. So just course, be on top yeah. of it. Yeah. Cool, I think that was good. Um, so next question then, question number eight. How much can I refinance if I stay in a BRR property? I'm a little bit confused by that question. I'm presumably saying if I buy a house and I want to refinance it, how yep. much money do I have to leave in the house? Basically. Um, anything from 20 to 30%. Yeah. It, it just depends on the lender and it depends on the person's circumstances. 30% at the minute because COVID has, has caused certain issues, but the national average, I believe, is 25%. Yeah. So if you have a £100,000 end value, you will have to leave £25,000 in that property and they will give you £75,000 back. Yeah, I, think. I, hope, I hope that's a question. For yeah, you. no, I think that is, yeah, and I think you've just pretty much summed it up really yeah. well. So. Um, next question then, what would you do with, similar to a previous question that we just had, what would you do with 25k uh, as a beginner in property on a homeowner with good credit? This person said. So 25k, again, that is, see I, I would always recommend that people who are going into flips, whether you use a bridging finance um, or whether you're going to use cash to purchase it, I always say that the, the amount that you will need is around 50k. And the way I explain that is, if you take a bridging loan out um, and the house that you're buying is 80K, they will ask you to put 20,000. So if you have 50,000, and obviously there's expenses as well, there's solicitor's costs, yep, stamp course, duty, yep. there's um, certain aspects of the bridging finance that you have to pay for as well. Um, so 50K is where I'd say that you need to be. But going back to the question with 25K, I would say joint venture. Find somebody who has the same amount of money or more money. Um, and do a joint venture with somebody. Joint ventures are amazing. Yep. Um, with the Property Circle members, we're doing four at the moment. Yep. Um, the reason that we decided to do that was because we wanted to give them a helping hand and not get into a market at the minute where they're unsure of certain things, which could cost them. So we, we're doing four joint ventures. Um, we actually said we was gonna do five, um, but time permitting didn't allow us to really do five. We were stretched a little bit yeah, with how yeah, much yeah. work we've got on. So we've done four. So yeah, the best thing with 25K is find somebody um, and and see if you can do a joint venture. 
that person who asked that question, um, I don't know who you are, but when you see this video, message me and we might do something with you if you if you want to. Yep. Um, that might be a really cool thing Again, to do. or just or just at least open a door yeah. that could potentially help. I don't know well. who that person is, but yeah. yeah, it could be um it could be something that and if we don't do a joint venture with you, I'm I'm pretty sure that we can put you in touch with one of our members who, yeah. who's ready to do something now. Yep, absolutely. Um, cool, so next question. Uh, this actually isn't a question. Uh, just, it was a really nice comment that someone said. Just to say, mate, the new videos are really helpful. Keep them coming. I thought that was quite nice to put in there. Always nice to be nice. Always nice to be nice. Be kind to be nice, yes. <laughs> Um, cool, so uh, next question then. How do I know whether deal sourcing is for me? If you've had to ask that question, I'd probably say deal sourcing is not for you um, because you just know. If it's something you want to do because you're passionate about property, you will go really far. Yeah. If it's something you want to do because you're gonna, you think you're going to be rich quick, it's not for you. Deal sourcing is very time consuming. As I explained in one of the videos on this channel, it's not as straightforward as picking up a laptop, finding a house on no. right move, running the renovation cost, and trying to sell it to somebody for two, three, four, five thousand pounds. There is a whole process. We that wish it was into. like that. I oh, was man. like that with all the millionaires. <laughs> yeah, right. um, we get sent a hundred houses a day, and when I say a hundred, that is no exaggeration. Um, my phone. As you know, because what's this thing that you like, keep laughing about in the office that like you're all trying to have a conversation? Oh, it's with hilarious! It's like trying to talk to a brick wall sometimes. We'll ask you a question, and then he's just. Oh, sorry, mate. What, what, what was that? <laughs> yeah, I literally get sent so many but deals it is a day. Crazy, yeah. But Senior again, messages. I have to go through these deals yep. because these people are asking for my advice, and it's beginning now to be become a bit. I'm being taken over now. Well, last night is is. A clear yeah. sort of proof of what, what can happen. You could have um, obviously just been been at home relaxing at seven o'clock at night, and you would have just missed that. Whereas, because they had fifteen viewings or something like that today. So they had no, they had fifteen viewings yesterday. Yeah. He had the last viewing at seven o'clock. Yeah. Um, and they had fourteen booked in today. So fourteen more viewings on top of fifteen viewings. That yep. house is going. Yeah. And you you could have missed out on that. Um, or, or Matt Cox could have missed out on yeah. that. So again, it is important. Yeah, I do go for every deal. So. And if I don't reply to some people when I've, I've gone through the deal, it's basically because my attention's gone elsewhere and I've literally yeah. forgot. Yeah. And it's not me being rude or anything like that because I do happens, respond to yeah. every single person or I try and respond to everybody. Yeah. So this question can actually elaborate on, on how do I know whether the deal sourcing is for me? Because uh, the next question is, should I quit my job and go into deal sourcing full time? No, 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 no. Can no, it replace no, my income? No, I do not advise anybody <laughs> to quit their job, no. Um, how can I explain the way that, I, if it was me, my opinion, I would do deal sourcing as my side job yep. for 12 months. Um, I'd find out whether I am any good at deal sourcing, which is easy, because if you're good at deal sourcing, you sell deals. It's that simple. Um, and then I would, I would do it for the 12 months to see what my average is, because you might be able to sell two deals this month, next month none, the month after none, the month after four, and then it starts coming like four, five, four, three, four, two, and I'd average it out over 12 months, and then I would make a decision on, on where whether my future it, Whether lies. it's possible or not for Yeah, me but to I do wouldn't that, advise yeah. anybody at all to quit their job. Um, not, not for me. No. Uh, I, I wouldn't advise anybody <laughs> to do that. So if anybody, if anybody does quit the job and goes into deal sourcing and doesn't do as well as they, they think, um, at least I can say I never advised you yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah, 12 months, average it out, see how you are, see what your income from your job is and what you've made from deal sourcing, which obviously deal sourcing is so lucrative, it's an yep. absolute, it's a joke. Yep. And obviously you've got the compliance and stuff like that. So yeah, so just make sure that everything's according to plan. Yep. And you have done 12 months, not three, not six, not nine. My yep. opinion is do a whole year of deal sourcing. I think, yeah, for, for the people that would be trying to ask that question, it might be because they're obviously fed up with their job now and stuff like that. So um, something that could potentially work is try and find something, if your obviously financial situation can accommodate to that, try and find something that's a little less stressful for you, obviously if you are going through a lot of stress at your job, something maybe uh, less hours, so part-time, so you can focus a little bit more on, on deal sourcing to figure out if it is something for you or not. But to be honest, like you said, it's, That's great uh, advice. Yeah, it's, it's something that you've got to try and really, really be careful of because you don't want to put yourself in a situation that you can't really get out of. Yeah, so. there's so many shit deal sources out there as well. Yeah, so many cowboys, yeah. It's a joke. Um, so yeah, so just, just take your time and find your path and make sure it's right for you. Yeah, 
So this is a really interesting question because we, we kind of touch on this uh, a fair, fair amount um, because it is something that obviously comes to our attention a lot, but what are your thoughts on lease option agreements? Wow. That's like asking what my thoughts on rent to rent are. Is that a question yeah. that we're having today? We are not having that question. Okay. Yeah. Lease option agreements are something that don't make no sense to me. Um, I'm a property owner and the easiest way that I can explain this to the, to the people at home, um, you guys watching, Max, you own a house today. Yep. Your house is worth a hundred thousand pound. Okay. Um, I come to you mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't know you. So, you know, you can't always use people that you know, so you're gonna have to venture out of your comfort zone. Yep. Um, Max, um, I wanna rent your house off you. Um, for whatever reason, you could be in financial trouble, whatever, doesn't matter what it is. And I'm gonna guarantee you a rent for, I think the norm on YouTube at the moment is five to seven years. This is what I'm hearing. Okay, um, yep. And I get this a lot, actually, the lease option thing. Um, and I say to you, right, I'm gonna rent your house for five years. Right. Either cheaper, because I'm guaranteeing your rent, or, market value, which makes no sense. But this is what I, I see on YouTube. Okay. And then in seven years time, I'm gonna buy your house off you for the figure that it's worth today. So in five years time, you're gonna buy my house for a hundred grand? Yeah, for, for the figure that it's worth today. And I'm yeah. also gonna guarantee you rent for five years. Right. But the option is in my favor. So in five years time, I might decide that I don't want to buy it from you. So if oh, you okay, have, right. okay. Who in their right mind yeah. is going to agree to that? Well, it'd be interesting to, to hear. Yeah, so anybody out there that, yeah, do, yeah. that does lease option agreements and can swear by it that it actually works, send me a message. Yeah, more than open and, to, to see it. And, and take us around and yeah. show us how it works because we have this, like... We see, do get it a lot, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's not something that I see. Lease option agreements on land... Is a whole other story. Is a whole other story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what some yeah, people Yeah, please, seriously, if there is somebody at home that can, can show us this working yeah. on a daily basis, send us a message and, and, and we'll tag along with you if we can, please. Yep. Cool, so next question then. I'm looking for a property mentor. I have noticed a lot of people in the education side of property don't have much experience, so what are your thoughts on this? Um, each to their own. People follow people that they have um, a kind of a rapport with. Mm -hmm. Even on social media, people feel like they know people. Um, so people watch this video at home and probably think, oh, Steve's a twat. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they don't. You know, but there is people out there but that do. You know, you're not like everyone's think, yeah. um, cup of tea. Gary V, I wasn't a massive fan of Gary V. It took me a, a, you know, time and time and time it's again. It's all just opinions. Because of Luke yeah. Moriarty. Um, okay. He's a big Gary V fan. Yeah, yeah. I like Grant, um, so I like watching him. Other people think he's arrogant, he's big-headed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's cocky. Um, very successful, very, very successful. Um, so each to their own. Yeah. Um, but the only advice that I would actually give that if you are following somebody and you are gonna go and get educated by this person, make sure they are actually practicing what they preach. Yeah. The so we know some, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, like I said, be nice, be kind is my whole mantra. You know, I don't really attack. Yeah anybody unless someone comes at me yeah of course I'm, I'm going to do something back as in like have a conversation but I don't attack people no. and, I, and I'm not here to, to put other people in the industry down um, I have my opinions but my advice would be how can you take advice from somebody who has done one two three renovations one two three flips they've not experienced anything um, they've not gone through five, six, seven years of, of hardship, um, mm -hmm. builders letting you down, um, certain aspects of the, of the um, chains falling through, solicitors making problems, houses, all sorts of things that can go wrong that we see on a daily yeah, yeah. basis. Um, I think that's the thing with property. It's like you could read loads out of a book, you could do, you could do courses, you can do whatever it is and think that you're a property investor, but yeah. until you've got the time and the, and the experience behind you, Education it, it's is a whole key. other ball Knowledge game. is power, yeah. but experience is just as important. You have to have physically yeah. gone out and yeah. done 20 renovations yeah. and, cut and met every single builder, um, characters across yeah. the board, so that when skills? you speak. People, people skills. skills, you can't just learn that. No, in, you can't. In, in a property so yeah, so skills. like there's so many educators out there who are so inexperienced, but preaching a load of shit 
Yeah. It, it actually pisses me off, yeah, I'll be yeah. completely honest with you. But like I said, I'm not here to, to bash other educators because each of their own. People might be attracted to that person because they're a beginner and they're showing that they are, you know, laying their own floor tiles yeah, in the yeah, house yeah. or they're, they're, they're painting their own walls or they're plastering the whole, their, own, their own house. Um, so if you like that, then follow it. But if they're, if they're asking you to pay for education, um, I, I, I wouldn't, no. personally. I will pay for education from the person who I aspire to be. Yeah. Um, has that person got 50 houses? Yep. Has that person done 50 renovations? Has that person done 50, 50 flips? Has that per Does that person actually show the successful side of it? Because I'll yeah. be like, okay, he or she has done it. They practice what they yeah, preach, and, and, they and I can they see them yeah. again. One of the things that I do on my Instagram a lot of, I show all the viewings we go on, I show the renovations, I show the breakdown of the deals, I talk about it because I live this. Yeah. This is my my life. Um, so yeah. So to answer the question, yes, it's cool how many people are out there trying to give education, but there's so many people out there giving education when they're inexperienced. The yeah. They're inexperienced. Yeah. Um, two flips and two buy to lets don't make you. Um, a professional. Make sure they practice what they preach and you can see that they are actually doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. And so, final question that we've got from, from this Q&A then is, do you do any developments? Oh wow, I get asked that a lot. A lot. So, my take on developments um, is, I have no intentions of building 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 houses. I have no intentions. I have my own reasons. Yep. Um, People who know me, um, people the, uh, who are members of the property circle, they've had this conversation with me hundreds and hundreds of times. We have land that we have permission to build houses on and I will build one house, maybe two on a, on a plot of land I've got. The reason I'm gonna do that is just so I can say, I know how to do it. I've done it, I've gone through all of the, the planning, all of the stages, I know how to build a house. I do know how to build a house, um, to be completely honest. I do understand the process of it, but I just wanna, do it myself. Understand it, uh, get the experience. Yeah, as I well. want to do it myself. Yeah. I have no desire to, um, to to build 50 to 60 houses. But for the person who asked that question, um, little plug here actually, um, Tyler Newman and Rosie Cassidy, yeah, yeah, yeah. development, they are, for me, the pinnacle in yeah. the, in, in, for people to learn from. So if there is people out there that want to do development, Tyler Newman and Rosie Cassidy are the two people that I would say, yes, pay attention and I'm not saying that out of favoritism because I know Tyler and I know Rosie if I know a lot of educators yeah and I've not shouted any of their names out but Tyler and Rosie I would advise that if you are into development pay attention to them yeah 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 so right, yeah. So yeah perfect so obviously that's that's the final bit of the Q&A really quick but 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 right one more thing before we finish off who's gonna right. walk in no no one's gonna walk in but we want to do a quick fire round so oh, you're gonna catch me out on some nonsense so, aren't you Steve, you've got to answer, right, I'm just going to say like a brief pause, uh, not a brief pause, like a, a brief uh, thing basically, and you've just got to give your opinion on You're it. You're going to put me and right on the It's going to be nice spot, and quick. Do I have to give my opinion or is it like just aim It's like first thing that comes to your head basically. Ah, oh, shit. So not necessarily your opinion, but just like straight away, all right? Okay. You'll know straight away what I mean once I ask you the first one. How many have we got? Uh, we've got, okay, right, good question. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Wow. So we've got 12, we've got to do it as quick as you can. Do you reckon we can do it in under 60 seconds? I'm not even trying it because I don't know what the hell this I think we can are. do it in under 60 seconds. We'll put a little time on the screen, all right? So okay. are you ready? Yeah. So first thing that comes into your mind, lease option agreements. Don't like them. Nando's. I've gone off it because of skin on fries. Chimney breast. Hate them. King size Twix. My favorite. Below market value deals. Love them. Deal sourcing. Love it. Anthony Joshua. The greatest. Tyson Fury. Decent, but not the greatest. <laughs> Come third place in a World Cup or win a bronze medal in the Olympics. Either you fucking crazy. <laughs> cool hogs, pork scratchings. Um, great brand. Tiger Estate Agents in Blackpool. Hate them. <laughs> Are we if allowed you, to put that in? If you could buy a house with no money, how many would you buy? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. I think that was in the 60 seconds. That was pretty good going. Okay. That yeah, was, that was actually good. a lot. I thought you were going to ask me. No, we could have. Maybe next time. I'd say, right, if this, if this video can get how many likes? 100 likes. We'll do something like this again. Yep. 100%. And if you do have any questions, leave them below. Yep, um, yep, yep. So Definitely yeah. drop you a follow on Instagram as well, because uh, we're going to be doing this quite a lot, quite yeah. regularly. So. And I do answer a lot of questions on Instagram Loads, as well. Loads, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, if you like the video, guys, uh, make sure you subscribe, like, 
leave a comment below. Um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. See you soon.